I have an example here. In this example, I see that I have a 10 mz, 20 mz, and 40 mz. These are the sample drawn, and I will label this as a drug since I'm talking about some medication. And this can be any variable in this case. So, well, in this drug, um, you know, I have a three categories. As you see, yeah, when one of ANOVA, we have a three category also. Once we have a three or more category, we can run ANOVA. Now, last time we ran one of ANOVA. This time we're going to run two ANOVA. Question is, why are you going to run two ANOVA? So this is not only one factor, this is another factor. I, rough, I have a man and woman. That is a group. This group has a man and this group has a woman. So in this one, I'm going to say gender. So once I have this uh, gender, and this is a uh, sample, which is a sample row factor. We call it sample. And this is a column factor. This is column factor, or we can say uh, factor two, or we can just explain factor. Now, once we have this, uh, then we can run two way and analyze the variance. And we're going to use our Excel. But before we use our Excel, there are some assumptions that must hold true. So what are the assumptions? First assumption is going to be these samples must be drawn from a population that is normally distributed or approximately normally distributed. Then I have another one that is the sample must be drawn from a population that is independent. This all population must be independent. And I have another one, the population must have equal, this, this population from each of them must have equal variances. This one versus this one versus this one, they have equal variances. Then finally, I have something that the row factor, the sample size for men must have the same sample size. For example, this one is a five. And so as this one also has a five, so the sample size must be same, five, five. If it is not same, we won't be able to run two way ANOVA in Excel. So, so I'm gonna click on home button. Once I click up the home button, this is how the Excel new or version of Excel looks like. Now, home button, then I'm gonna look for data. Once I look for data, I'm gonna look for data analysis. This is where I am interested. This is, is gonna let me run to ANOVA and all the tests actually you can think of and statistics and all the calculations so I'm going to click on data analysis now again good thing I have the data analysis if I don't have the data analysis then I have to add in the data analysis tool pack and how do you do that and there is a video right below the description um, there is a link how to add in the um, you know data analysis tool pack so I do have it so I'm going to click on data analysis so there are so many of them so I'm going to click and over two factor with replication and over two factor with replication so i'm going to click ok once i click ok remember i'm going to actually look into here and let's see this one is not highlighted so i'm going to actually click hold and drag and let it go so i do have already this highlighted then the next one is five so this one is five so this is a five sample row for sample so this is a sample in this case men this group has one two three four five and this also has one two three four five that's why early on the assumption assumption we said each group must have same sample size equal sample size so that's five and again if this is three sample size you're going to put a three so this is going to be completely different each time you run so we have to make sure that how many sample size are given in each group and this one on number three alpha level significant level which is 0 0.05 alpha very small and 95 percent confidence level this is standard so we just leave it like that we don't change it then of course where do i want to see my work i can open up a new worksheet or i can just look into here somewhere I, you know type it in actually as you see e is the column and two is the row so this is e2 now and i let it go click ok and hopefully it's going to come off with all the data i am looking for as you see so beautifully just click away so i'm going to make it smaller here so all these are coming up here so two factor with analysis so i do have all the drug and the categories as you see everything is done some average variance is again you know it's, it's more than one factor so uh, we have everything down here now, which one we are interested? We are interested in the source of ANOVA. So, this source of ANOVA, let me actually make sure I move this a little bit here. Okay, good. Then, of course, this is the source of variation. This is for sample, and this is for column, and this is for, again, this is for a factor 1, and this is for a factor 2. What is called row factor, this is a column factor, and this is the interaction. What is happening between 
factor A and factor B, factor 1 and factor 2, and that's basically interaction. Another word is the influence, how much influence this sample has between them actually. So this actually gives us everything, almost everything we're looking for. We are interested in this one. So well, we, if we have a few F value, F value, F statistics, we're going to uh, hold against the critical value of critical value. We're going to hold F criti critical value against the F statistics or we look into the fee value with against the alpha level so we can do two things so i'm going to show both in five step hypothesis test let's move into hypothesis test how do we set up null is going to be complicated than the ono anova ono anova we can put down one null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis but two anova is going to be three null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis and also conclusion and decision is going to be also three of them so in between everything is basically three 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 so let's okay so since we have our anova source we have the source now we're going to set up a complete hypothesis test so remember null and alternative hypothesis then we're going to go app statistics then we're going to go critical value this one can we can reshuffle actually uh, fee value critical value can be step two and uh, step three and so on and step four and five i keep it same on decision and conclusion actually so it's five steps hypothesis test as like as every other test since z test t test chi square goodness of fee test any test you name it we can just finish it five steps so what is the first step here we're going to say first step in this case we're going to talk about sample row so we're going to say factor one or group one so we're going to say the population mean of the first factor are equal and we're going to say right away we're going to say population mean of the first factor are not equal actually so this one we can say basically the sample in this case we talk about sample or row we talk about row and this one down here we're going to go to column so we can say the population means of the second factor are equal again i want to make sure that we understand here the first factor i mean in this case uh, you know uh, in this case i mean first factor mean in this case gender like male male and female and second factor i mean in this case the drug like 10 mz 20 mz 30, 40 mz whatever um, mz so it's question depends on the question or depends on the question or uh, context the variable is going to change so i just kept it a standard first factor second factor right we're going to say the population mean of the second factor are not equal in other words which one columns are not equal so columns are not equal like categories down there and the third assumption is going to be because remember there is an interaction between them between second factor and first factor interaction the influence what is the influence you have to figure it out so we say that there is no interaction between two factors first we have to come up with this claim right or you can say there is an interaction between two factors or we can say in this case actually as this is as like as a contingency table in chi square goodness or in, in independent test we have done it so this is like contingency table now there is a no interaction we can say the you know there is no interaction present between them we can basically say uh, interaction is absent or is in this case interaction is present so what is the app statistics i just come i bring everything from the anova source and i have this app statistics for row sample is that three decimal places is always ideal and app statistics for column which is also three decimal places which is ideal also i started down right from here okay then step three if the fee value also is coming for row and sample which is a row is a sample and column and just the categories and this is interaction so i have all these down here so what i am going to do i'm going to actually come up with a decision and conclusion that is something we have to pay attention here so we can actually um, you know full foot against the fee value against the alpha significant level and to come up with a decision conclusion or also another way you can go critical value we foot against the f statistics then we can actually look into the uh, decision and conclusion also so let's understand how we come up with a decision so i'm going to put this fee value against the significant level alpha so what was the alpha alpha was 0 0.05 five percent significant level two or you can do it if we don't want to visualize this um f test or chi squared then we can actually look into this if we remember phi value if phi value less than or equal to 
alpha we reject the null hypothesis r e c e c t reject the null hypothesis that's one way we can say or i don't i don't myself i don't remember actually i don't remember that i don't memorize it so i just look into here this is 72 percent fee value in this case 72 percent and our threshold is five percent so if i look into that this area under the curve is always one so if i start from the right it's going to be one two three four five six up to five here is the rejection then if i go to the left here six seven eight nine ten seventy two you know this is all this is falling definitely inside so therefore we are going to fail to reject in other words we keep the null hypothesis so that is the first one here this first one we come up with fail to reject the null hypothesis let's take a look here we fail to reject the null hypothesis question is how do you write conclusion actually we say that the data does not provide sufficient evidence the two population mean are equal why this is we already had the data here present and this probability value is so big that it is you know falling on the left so we just you know believe in the null hypothesis we are rejecting the alternative hypothesis in favor of null hypothesis so we just keep the null hypothesis so now i'm going to look into the column so in the column i have this fee value probability value which is a two percent so two percent i would say somewhere is falling in the in down here on the rejection area so we are rejecting the null hypothesis we're rejecting the null hypothesis now Again, this is 2%. The smaller the fee value is, the more likely you're going to reject the null hypothesis. Again, if you want to memorize, if you remember that, we can actually say, well, look at this here. Fee value less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. If fee value greater than alpha, if fee value greater than alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So it's up to you if you want to remember that. So in both cases, going to give same thing here. So I love visually actually here. So that is now question is how do we explain or an analyze the conclusion? So we say when you reject, we say data does provide sufficient evidence. So let's take a look. Data does provide sufficient evidence that the factor B doses have a significant effect on scores or anything of um, significant eff effect on uh, the gen you know genders basically. Now, if I look into the third one down here, interaction, the influence. Is there any influence? Well, look at this fee value is so big. So definitely we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we say there is no interaction between two factors. So we, we are failing. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, we are going to actually look into how do you explain it. We're going to say that. The data does not provide sufficient evidence that there is the interaction between gender and doses is present. So that's how we conclude our hypothesis test. So we have done the fee value already. We actually checked out fee value. Then now we're going to move into the F critical value. We're going to hold F critical value, this critical value against the F statistics. And uh, believe me, it's going to be the same conclusion as um, p value comparison. So, in this case, I have a p critical value. So, let's actually label the critical value approximately again. It's going to be just approximate. So, I'm just for visually, I'm just checking this out. F critical value 4.26. We can get this by using the F table also. So, well, one of um, you know, analysis of variance and Excel gives that also. So, 4.26 now. I'm looking to the first one here so that's the first one down here 1.25 this is for sample row so 1.25 definitely is going to be just on the rejection area so somewhere in there so it's going to be in rejection area clearly we see there's an, again alpha we are not comparing alpha this time already compared now critical value with the F statistics so 1.25 area under the normal curve is always one so in this case we look into inside so well basically 100 percent so in this case if it is 4.26 that's supposed to be in the rejection area so we reject the null hypothesis all right now we're going to move into the same thing we're going to do in this case if we have this one instead of 4.26 we are going to have right now 3.403 now 
And then we're gonna look into that one down here, this guy down here in the middle. We're gonna look into the column this time, column factor. It's 4.196. So this is three. If this is three value, we don't want to go and level that right now. Level is 3.4. So that 4.196 six it should be on the left side somewhere somewhere under this curve on the left side is gonna we're gonna fail to reject the null hypothesis this time so the one is coming up here is gonna be somewhere down here and the top one was right on the rejection area so this time on the second one we fail to reject the null hypothesis again we just compare it actually so the last one, if I level this up here again, this is the critical value of critical value 3.403. Both time was the critical value same, but test statistics come out to be different. So we're going to compare now this one down here. So this is like 4.144. 4. So that must fall into the rejection area also if we compare the critical value with the test statistic so this time we also reject the null hypothesis as like it's the first time also we are rejecting the null hypothesis here and this time we fail to reject the null hypothesis in other words we keep the null hypothesis for the column so thank you very much i hope you understand uh, how to run anova to anova in excel uh, if